In this presentation, we will continue on with our comprehensive problem related to a not-for-profit hospital. We have the information on the left-hand side. We've been entering that information into the blue area on the right-hand side. We've been entering the transactions into the general journal, journalizing the journal entries into the general journal, posting them then to the trial balance worksheet, entering the closing balance or the closing entries as we see down below, resulting in the post-closing trial balance, then we started to work our financial statements almost completed with them we started and completed so far the balance sheet the statement of operations the statement of changes in net assets and now are on the statement of cash flows so we're going to be doing the statement of cash flows we'll be taking a look at kind of an indirect type of method with the statement of cash flows it'll look very similar to the statement of cash flows type method we would have for a for-profit organization although the accounts may differ to some degree therefore we want to go through it we're not going to go through in detail the best practices formats for a statement of cash flow preparation. If you want to look at that, we have a course for that. Highly recommend doing that. Most people are not good at creating the statement of cash flows. Not as not as intuitive as it would be for other uh, other the rest of the financial statements. Okay, so we're going to go through the statement of cash flows. We're going to be using a kind of an indirect type of method here. So we've got cash flows from operating activities. That's where we're going to start. When we use the indirect type of method, we're going to start with a change in net assets, which in essence would be kind of like net income. The change in net assets, you would think you'd get it from the statement of operations if you were comparing it to a for-profit type of organization. But you'll recall, we kind of got ourselves left hanging out here in the statement of operations at this level of the excess of revenues and gains over expenses. And we, never, we, we didn't uh, get that final component really of the unrealized loss on, on investments. Therefore, the starting point is actually going to be coming from here, the increase in net assets, which is going to be coming from the statement of changes in net assets. So that's going to be something a bit different than the for-profit type of organization. So we want to point that out. But in essence, it's the same kind of starting point that we would think of. We're going to say that is going to be our starting point. It would be similar if we went up to the trial balance. You'll note that if I was to consider all the temporary accounts, all of these accounts, just like we would for a for-profit type of organization, you know, basically revenue minus expenses, that would add up to the 90,659, this number, that in essence would is what we would think of as the bottom line number and just a straightforward kind of income statement for a for-profit. So it does make sense that that would be our starting line number. You'll recall that the operating section basically reflects this number, this 90,659, 59 like the the net income that we are then going to represent with regards to a cash flow we're going to basically convert the the income statement the temporary type of accounts to a cash flow type of statement that is our objective the indirect method then instead of going from top to bottom readjusting all of these accounts in essence to a cash basis from an accrual basis we start at the end and then reverse out those items which are non uh, non cash basis and we do that by taking the changes in the balance sheet accounts because the balance sheet accounts represent those accrual type of activities and therefore by reversing them out we can make the adjustment okay so we're going to scroll back down and we're going to we're going to do that process same as you would see for a uh, for-profit type of organization these are going to be then adjustments to reconcile change in net assets to net cash provided by operating activities so we're going to start off with an increase in accounts receivable net so i'm going to go all the way back up top now we're going to, we want to make sure that we're always going all the way up top i know it's it's kind of way up here <laughs> to get to this statement but we want to be up top on this statement not the, the the closing statement because this number represents the beginning numbers which you can kind of think of as last year's ending numbers so oftentimes in practice, you'll have last year's basically ending numbers and then this year's ending numbers. And then you put it in a worksheet and have the difference between the two. We're not going to go through the worksheet. We're just going to say, hey, these are our beginning numbers because we have the beginning trial balance in our worksheet. These are the ending numbers. The difference between the two is the change, which basically we can see here in the middle. So what we're going to be looking at then, I'm going to, un I'm going to unyellow these outer columns. And then we'll we'll go ahead and yellow them up possibly as we go. Might be useful technique. So we're going to be picking up this one and this one, the change. And so typically in the change, the worksheet would be, you know, the sum of these two, the net minus the sum of these two. That's going to be the, the 
uh, formula we will use. So let's see what that'll look. I'm going to scroll all the way back down. Probably should have reformatted this slightly differently, but we are where we are here. So we're going to say we are in cell V70. So I'm going to say equals the sum of, and I'm going to scroll all the way back up to uh, our, these two accounts. And I'm going to sum up these two. So you see the formula up here. It's the sum of these two. And then I'm going to close the brackets. So the sum of R4 to, to R5. Then I'm going to say minus the sum of these two, the beginning, the beginning balances. So minus the sum of those two. So in essence, it's this minus this, my, and then you take that total minus the sum of these two, right? So this minus this, this minus this, and then subtract them out. So I'm going to close up the brackets, and then we'll enter that. Now we want this to be a negative, and the general rule, you just I would just memorize the rule, is if there's an increase in accounts receivable or any type of asset account represents a decrease in... Uh, the statement of cash flows and if you want more information on why that is you can take a look at the statement of cash flows course It's really good to understand the statement of cash flows better it helps you understand the accrual basis But here we're going to go by the general rule Therefore, I'm going to flip the sign by saying negative and put brackets around the entire thing And enter so there's going to be that the next we're going to have the increase in the interest receivable and, and so we're going to do the same process. I'm going to scroll all the way back up. We're looking for now the interest receivable. So the interest receivable is going to be here. So that's going to be this amount that we're going to be picking up. Now there's no beginning balance. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward journal entry. I'm just going to say equals that number, right? And I want to make it a negative once again, because there was an increase. Therefore on our statement of cash flows, we want to make it a, a, a negative number, decreasing the amount related to uh, the, the net income or cash flows from operations from uh, the starting point or reconciling from the net income or change in net assets. Okay, so this is going to be the 1630 and enter. So there we have that one. Next, we're going to be looking for the increase in inventory. So once again, scrolling all the way back up, we're now picking up the increase in inventory. Here's our inventory account, the 90,000. I'm going to put the yellow dot or the yellow square or the yellow rectangle next to it. And then we're going to go back down. At least I didn't call it a triangle. It's not a triangle, at least. I'm going to say this is going to be equal to, and we'll scroll back up. And we're looking for the inventory. So again, we would subtract these two out. Now, I want it to be a negative number. So maybe I should start to do this. The Maybe I should say this one minus this one, which is going to bring us the difference of the 4,800, which you can see in the middle. There it is. And it's negative now. And why is it negative? Because I know it's a negative because it's an, it's an asset. It increased. Therefore, it needs to be a negative here. That's the general rule. Next, we're going to have an increase in the accounts payable. So an increase in the accounts payable. So if we scroll back all the way up, now we're looking for the accounts payable. That's going to be this one. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm just going to take the difference between those two, which is going to be, of course, that 57.9, which might be easier for me to be picking up than the difference between them. But this is more like you would see how it's done on a worksheet. You do the difference. That's what you're supposed to do. So I'm going to say this equals scrolling back up and we're going to take the difference of this minus this now i don't care if they're, they're negative numbers i'm just going to subtract a negative minus a negative i don't whatever the sign is it is and then i apply the rule the rule being now we're talking about payables if there's an increase in the payable the payable went up then we're going to increase it in our statement of cash flows that's just the general rule so i have to flip the sign then that needs to be a positive so i'm going to double click on it i'm going to put a negative and then brackets around this so that it keeps that number and flips the sign for it. Then we've got the increase and then they all went up. Increase in the accrued payroll. So if we scroll back up, now we're picking up the accrued payroll. That's going to be this one. Right click and make that yellow. Scrolling back down. We're going to say this is equal to. Scrolling back up. The change there, we're going to say I'm going to pick up this number minus this number which will be the 177790 i don't care what if it's negative or positive then i apply the rule it it went up so that for that means it needs to be a positive number here i'm going to flip the sign by putting a negative up in front of this and then the brackets around it 
All right, so there's the increase there. Then we have the depreciation. Now the depreciation is one that's kind of confusing a lot of times, so just to point this out, you can, of course, pick up the depreciation from uh, the income statement often, although you can't really see it here because the depreciation is, is grouped by category. So, But even if it was, typically I would pick up the depreciation and view it again as changes in the balance sheet account. That's our custom. That's what we're doing. So I would think about it as that format. And if that if the change in the balance sheet account doesn't equal depreciation, it's because there was a sale or something like that. And that'll help you to indicate that that is indeed the case and help you to dig down further. So if you pick up the change here, which is going to be the change in the accumulated depreciation, then that's going to give us uh, the, what, the number that we want, hopefully depreciation. Again, if it doesn't, it's an indication that we need to go do some further work. work and uh, I would start with that number and then just make it yellow and, and highlight that we want to go back to it. In this case, it'll, it'll work because we didn't sell any stuff this time. So that's good. So we're going to scroll back down and we're going to take the change in those numbers. And so I'm going to say this equals, and I'm going to scroll back up and we're going to pick up the change here minus this. And then I'm going to say plus this minus this. All right. I know that's kind of ugly looking, but you could say, you know, obviously it's this plus this, this plus this, and then subtract the two out. So if the formula is confusing to you, then, then just apply basically that, that principle. Okay, so I'm going to enter, and so we have that. Now it came out to be a negative, and what I want is a positive. And the way I would think of that is basically that, you know, depreciation is something that was decreased in what would be like the net income, the change in assets. And we need to make it an increase. Now we need to add it back because there was no cash involved in it. So depreciation is always going to be an increase. It's kind of hard to think about the, the the depreciation account with the general rule because it's a contra asset account, which kind of makes it messy. So I would think of it separately. Anyway, we're going to put brackets around that. And so there we have those. And so then the next one's going to be unrealized loss on investments. Unrealized loss on investments. This one is where we're going to be picking up that uh, 681 because again there's no cash involved here so there was no cash involved and so that one I'm actually going to pick up uh, the the 681 or you could pick up the change basically in the investments if you look at the investments up top there should be a change in the investments of this minus this we should probably stick with our convention to get to that 681 it should be a uh, positive so I'm going to flip the sign of that and so that's another one that you probably want to think of if you can as a change in in a balance sheet account as opposed to just picking it up on on the income statement because that could start to confuse you because what we're trying to do is find all the changes in the balance sheet so I picked up the change in the balance sheet here and if I f pick up all the changes in the balance sheet we should be good to go right that should be our answer we picked up the change here and so we picked up the change here so there we have that so we're going pretty good everything looks good so far we're going to scroll back down and that then we're going to have the subcategorization which will be the net uh, cash provided by operating activities we're going to put that in the outer column we're going to use the trusty sum formula equals the sum of and we're going to highlight all of those and so there's the 561.850. Okay, so next we're going to have the cash flows from the financing activities because we don't have any investing activities. So we're not going to put anything for investing activities. All we have are the financing activities where we had a payment on uh, the mortgage payable. I'm going to indent this a bit. So that one then is going to be up top. We'll see that there was a change here between the mortgage here so the, between these two and these two which is obviously that 545 so I'm going to take the difference again we're going to go back down I'm going to take the difference between those two so all the way back down we're going to be here I'm going to say this equals the sum of scrolling back up and scrolling over a little bit the sum of these two closing the brackets here's my formula up top so the sum of those two close the brackets minus the sum of these two. Oop, I didn't sum. Minus the sum 
of these two, closing the brackets. Now again, if that's confusing to you, if that formula is confusing, it's this plus this, this plus this, then we subtract them. So this would be the formula, sum this, sum that, sum of this minus the sum of that. All right, so there we have it. Now we need, this should be a negative because this is a payment. This is the payments that happened. We're paying off the mortgage. We didn't take more money out. So I'm gonna take this whole thing and flip the sign by putting a negative in front of the first item, brackets around the entire thing, just to flip the sign. So there we have the 545, and that's the only thing included. So I'm gonna categorize it out as net cash provided by financing activities is just simply that number. Then we're gonna have the increase in cash. So the net increase in cash and cash equivalents will be the ones provided by operating activities and the financing. There are no investing in this problem. Therefore, we just sum these up like so. And we have the 16,850. Then we're going to tie this out to the cash at the beginning of the year. So the cash, and if I scroll back up, you'll note now that there was no change in, in the land and the building. So I can highlight those. We, we found we don't need to find a home for those because there's nothing there to find a home for. There's no there's no one to live in the home that we would put there. It'd be empty. So we're going to have those and then we found a home for these two. So that one's done. So the only thing we haven't found a home for then is cash and cash. These are both cash. So these are now we're going to say this is the beginning cash and then we're going to have our, our change which is everything except cash which will end up with the bottom line and the statement of cash flows being the ending cash. So we're going to pick up then these numbers, the beginning cash. So I'm going to scroll back down, statement of cash flows, pick up the beginning numbers on the outer column. We are in cell W83 equals, scrolling all the way back up, scrolling all the way back up. We're going to be picking up the beginning cash here plus the cash here, the 1840. So those are our cash balances and enter. So there we have that. And then we're going to have the ending cash, cash and cash equivalents uh, end of the year, which will just simply sum up those two numbers. So it equals the sum of these two numbers. There's our ending cash, the 413, 8, uh, 890. And that, of course, will add up to, if we scroll all the way back up top, this number and the other cash number this number i'm holding down control and that'll give us the 413 890. it will also tie out to on the balance sheet cash here and cash here which adds up to 413 890 so that's going to be one of our checks that we want to be checking from the statement of activities so we can check that this number the 90,659 uh, ties out to the 90,659 in the statement of changes in activity and of course we can check that the ending number, the, the cash and cash equivalents at the end of the year ties out to the balance sheet just as we do so. We want to make sure that we are picking up both the cash number that is not restricted and the one that is, and that'll give us our check there.